station of the South Carolina ETV network. There's a legend that Sophocles, approaching 90, was sued in the Athenian courts by his son, who accused his father of senility. The old man replied by quoting from his latest play, the choral ode in praise of Athens, and was acquitted on the spot. The play was Oedipus at Colonus, set in the rural suburb where Sophocles himself was born. It would be the last of more than 120 plays, and one of only seven that survived. I'm Michael York with a soap opera update circa 406 BC. At the end of our last episode, the blinded monarch had predicted for himself a life of exile, wandering with his daughters until the time should come for some extraordinary end. Oedipus at Colonus is about that time, a logical concern for an aging playwright whose career had spanned the glory that was Greece, from victory over the Persians to the splendors of democratic Athens. And now, after decades of war, to the brink of defeat by Sparta, even as Sophocles struggled to rally and remind his fellow Athenians, the enemy was camped only 12 miles away. At Colonus, a few months before, Athenian cavalry had won a minor skirmish with the Thebans, who had allied with themselves with Sparta. There wasn't much, but it was on such slender hope that Sophocles built this play, Oedipus at Colonus. <laughs> Antigone, your father is old and blind. And here's another new place, eh, daughter? The outcast and his wanderings. What country is it or town? Whose charity do we ask for today? A few scraps, that's all. The bare necessities. And if it's less than that we're given, still we're content. Time passes, suffering must be endured until we learn patience. And I was born a king. Can you see some place where I can sit down? On the common earth by the roadside? Or a cool grove of trees sacred to some local god or other? And while I'm resting, dear girl, find out where we are today. It's always wiser for strangers like us to talk to the locals, discover from them how the land lies, and take their advice. My poor father. You've suffered enough. In the far distance, I can see the city. Towers and walls. But this seems to be a holy place.
choir of nightingales making music together. There's a naked rock, like a seed, but carved by the hand of nature, not man. You can sit there, rest your legs. It's been a long journey. And you're an old man. Well, sit me down then. I'm blind. Can't do it for myself. I don't need to be told after all this time. So. Where do you think we are? Athens, for sure. This place? I don't know. Yes, everyone on the road told us that much. Oh. Do you want me to find somebody? Ask where we are? Yes, if there's anyone to ask. People live here, certainly. No need to go looking. I think I can see somebody coming. This way, Antigone? Is he coming this way? Yes, he is, but be careful what you say. He's standing directly in front of you. You can see, my friend, that my daughter's eyes do service for us both. And she tells me we're in luck and that you perhaps can answer some of our questions. Before you ask anything, get up from that seat and come away. Uh, uh, that place is taboo. You're trespassing on holy ground. What place is this? What God has honored here? It's sacrilege even to enter, let alone sit down. And no one can live there. Terrifying goddesses have made it their sanctuary. Nightmare creatures from the mind's darkness and primeval earth. What are their names? I must pray to these guardians. Here we call them the kindly ones, whose eyes are merciless and see everything. In other countries, they have other names. The Furies. I hope they will see and be kindly to me and accept my prayers. Because I shall rest here and never leave this place. What do you mean? Things that were prophesied. Signs that I recognize. Listen to me, then. You seem friendly, and I don't want to see you in any trouble. You've got troubles enough by the look of you. And I guess you've seen better days. Being among the well-born and powerful, I shouldn't wonder. Just you stay there. Just there, where I found you. And I'll tell everyone what you've just said. The locals, I mean, not the people from the city. And it's up to them. They'll decide what's best. To let you stay here, or to move you on. Yes, he's gone now. We're alone again, Father, the two of us. You can say what you like. Goddesses of darkness, whose faces are too terrible for living men to look on without fear. This place is your sanctuary. And this stone, the spot where I first found rest in a strange land. Look kindly now upon me. And remember the god Apollo, who, when he foretold all the horrors and miseries of my life, also prophesied that my long journey would come to an end and I would find rest in an alien country, in a holy place, sacred to the Furies, goddesses of punishment and absolution. In that place, the god promised your painful life will come to an end with good luck and blessings on the fortunate people who give you shelter and a lasting curse on the others who cast you out. Confirmation of the God's intention will be given to me in thunder and lightning and by shaking of the earth. Now I feel certain great goddesses, daughters of darkness and the night's terrors, that you have guided me to your secret place with unseen hands, led me to sit here on this sacred stone. A man who never drinks wine, among you to whom wine is sacrilege. Queens of the darkness, inhabitants of all our nightmares, what was foretold so long ago, bring to consummation. Let 
my life end in peace and serenity. Unless you think that I, who have suffered more than any man living has suffered, am beyond all redemption. You were born with the original creation of the world, children of the first darkness. Hear my prayer. May the city of Athens now protect me. The queen of cities, with the wisest of gods as her patron. May she look with pity on the shrunken carcass, the pale shadow of the man who was Oedipus, king of Thebes. Father, mm. I can see some old men coming. They're searching everywhere. They're looking for you. Then take my hand and lead me further into the trees where we can hear without being seen. It will be safer and wiser to learn what they intend before we meet them. Where is he? Who is this man? Where does he come from? What's his home? He slipped away. Where is he hiding? You stop at nothing. Look everywhere. Comb every bush and thicket. Leave nothing undone. He must be a tramp or a wandering beggar of some sort. And he's old. A foreigner, too. Not one of us, I'm certain of that. None of us would be so bold. As you approach that holy place, where the living goddesses have their habitation, the awesome and furious. The very word makes me shiver. With eyes averted, we pass by, heads bowed, muttering silent prayers of devotion in a reverent stillness. But now the word goes, this tramp is in there. Not whatever direction I look, there is no sign of him or his blasphemies. says my ears are my eyes this is a disgrace horrifying to see you or hear such words i mean no disrespect to the spirits of the place who is this old man you scarred us now not one gentleman whom young or old could call blessed with good luck and for proof look how i see through another's eyes and hold my anchor to this slim cable my guide and guardian through the dangerous world. and deep suffering. But now you are causing a deeper disgrace. Don't bring down the greater curse on your head by your sacrilegious trespassing. Not one step more. Further within, there is a silent grassy glade. Most secret, most sacred. A green sanctuary where the clear water springs. And the ritual offerings are poured. Honey and water from that pure stream. Never, old man, must you enter there. However exhausted, however Speak without fear. We'll listen, but not from forbidden ground. Keep silent, or else come down to us here. Well, child, what's wisest? What shall we do? This place is holy. It's best to conform to local custom. Pay respect where it's due. Take my hand, then. Have it already, Pearl. I'm at your mercy, gentlemen. If I must come from this sanctuary, don't betray my trust. No one will stop you from resting here, old man, or drive you away by force. Is it fair? 
further? Yes, further. Further still? Show him the way, girl. You have eyes, and the seat might well not be required. Not for the first time. Uh. Be careful. Don't fall. Further into darkness with every step. But my eyes are open. Yeah. There's nothing to fear. It would be respect for their feelings. We can hope they'll treat us kindly. If anyone will. I've trusted you always. Everywhere. You are a stranger. Take our advice. Learn to respect for our state respects. And in your situation, it would be wise to revere the things that we revere. Then lead me, Antigone, to some safe place where I can speak without offense to these good people. It makes sense to do what they ask with a good grace. The story of my family. Go on! Dear child, what now? What shall I say? Who is your father? You must be some man's son. Must I relive this suffering every day? You've led them to the edge. You'll have to speak. You're right. I can't hide it. There's no other way. Tell us now. We're a dog. What a time you take. Does the name Lias mean anything? Oh, no! Oh, and the line of Lapdacus in Thebes. Dear yeah. God! The damnation of a man called Oedipus. Is it you? Does the mere name frighten you? It's only a, a word. Get out! And again. And again. Get away! Antigone, what's happening? What are they doing? Be out with you, quickly! Get out of our country! You promised me safety. Does your word mean nothing? We didn't know who you were then. No one will blame us if we pay you back in your own coin. You deceived us. And if we choose to break a promise, that's what you deserve. So now, get out of our territory. Take yourself back where you came from. Don't deprave our air with your breath or pollute the soil we love. Gentlemen, listen. I know you are just and not without you have some moral sense and no right from wrong. If you feel you must refuse to listen to my father, whose offense was committed in ignorance, and who endures old age and blindness, and the terrible story blasting his name forever, pity my tears. I beg you my share of his misery. He lives in darkness, alone. Let my eyes speak to yours and for his agony, as your own daughter's eyes would, with an intense compassion for a father's degradation. You are gods to us. Our destinies are in your hands. Think of your wives, your children, your homes, everything in your lives that matters and pity our pain. The least of mortal men is the gods' concern. Our innocence or guilt will bring us all to the same dust. You are Oedipus' daughter, and we pity you as much for that as we pity him for all his suffering. But we fear the gods and obey their laws. What else can we do? 
so much then for a good name and a reputation for honorable dealing. All worth nothing when it comes to the point. Athens of all cities is famous for it. Her godlike hospitality. Any refugee on the run from his homeland, here, if anywhere, he'll find a welcome. But not in my case, apparently. In my case, you lure me from the rock where I found sanctuary, and now you will drive me with curses to your frontier and kick me out. And why is this? Because you're afraid of my name. Don't blacken the good name of Athens with actions unworthy of her reputation. I came as a refugee, I asked, but rest and protection, which you promised. Will you break that promise? Because of ugly scars on my eyes and an uglier history, the gods see my sufferings. Something of their holiness lingers about my wounds. And in my wretchedness, I come to bring your people a blessing. When your king or some person in authority arrives, you will hear and understand the whole story. Till then, don't deceive me. And don't betray me by breaking your word. See. What, what you say is worth hearing, hearing old man. man. All the spiritual meaning, wisely argued, in well-chosen words, and must be taken seriously. Our leader must hear you. He will decide. Where is he, this man who will make the decision? In the city of our ancestors. But the local man who found you and alerted us has gone to fetch him. May his coming bring a blessing to himself, his people, and to me. An act of kindness brings its own reward. Dear God, am I seeing things? I can't be certain. Antigone, what's happening? There's a woman riding a horse. Sicilian, I think. She's wearing a hat with a broad brim to protect her from the sun, so her face is in shadow. And I can't be certain. But I think it's her. But it can't be, can it? I must be dreaming. But I think it is. It is! She's smiling! It's Mady! She's waving to us! It's Mady! What are you talking about? It's your daughter, my sister, here before our eyes! Listen, you'll know that voice. I've come a long way, dearest father, dear sister. Now that I've found you, I can hardly see you. My eyes are so full of tears. My child, is it really you? I'm so old, father, so tired. You managed to find me. So difficult to find. Touch me, dear girl. There's a hand for both. Oh, my children. My sisters. These dreadful sufferings. Hers and mine. Mine too. We all suffer. <laughs> Why have you come, girl? I'm worried for you. Because you missed me? That's too. <laughs> but the main reason was to bring you news. traveled with this one servant I can still trust. Oh. Where are your brothers? Couldn't they help? They are. Where they are, they have terrifying problems. Oh, as I can imagine. They behave no better than Egyptians, the pair of them. The Egyptian fashion is for the men to stay at home sewing while the women go out and break their backs and earn the living. So your two brothers laze about at home, gossiping by the fire like a couple of housewives, leaving you two girls to cope with all the problems, carry the burden of my miseries, and share my hard life. This one, Antigone, ever since she grew up and became a woman instead of a girl, has been on the road with me, my, my nurse, my guide, my governess, in, in wastelands and forests, soft and without shoes and hungry, and drenched by the rain, sunburnt, exhausted. It has never crossed her mind to go home and live comfortably to look after her father, to get bread between his teeth has been her first concern. Oh, well, Miss Mandy, what's the news? What has made you leave home and travel such a distance to speak to your father? It must be serious, I know that. Nothing frivolous would bring you so far. My own troubles, dearest father. Finding where you were and how you were living, I'd rather forget. 
Living through it was bad enough. The telling would be no easier. More to the point is the disastrous story of your unlucky sons. That's what I've come to tell you. At first, well aware of the curse that has for so long plagued our family, they were more than keen that Crayon should take the throne, hoping by that that the city would not be defiled and that our family's long-lived guilt would finally be purged. But now, some god of motiveless destruction, an unprincipled criminality seems to possess them both, a mania. A lust for power has infected them, and they compete with each other to seize control and rule in peace. Eteocles acted first. Our mad-headed younger brother, he outmaneuvered Polynices, deposed him, and kicked him out of the city. And the word is that Polynices is in exile in Argos, raising mercenary troops and making diplomatic alliances to invade Thebes and subdue the Theban people, so that Argos will either destroy them completely or make Polynices master of the city. Father, this is no fabrication of mine. It's the dreadful truth. How long must we wait before the gods will stop punishing you? They will stop someday, then. You hope for some deliverance, some pity at the end? Oh, yes. These latest oracles, if I understand them correctly. What oracles? What do they say about me? That Thebes' safety will one day depend on you, and they must get you back, alive or dead from a man like me. Their power, they say, draws its energy from you. Power? After I'm dead, is, is that the idea? The same gods who humiliated you support you now. A bad bargain for an old man destroyed in his youth. Be that as it may, Crayon is coming. And for those very reasons, he'll be here today. To do what? Don't mince matters. To get you settled as close as possible to the borders of Thebes, to keep you handy without actually setting foot on Theban soil. What use am I outside the borders? They must honor your grain, or face the consequences. The native witch should have taught them that, not oracles. And that's why they want to keep you under observation, just across the frontier, in effect, a prisoner. And will they bury me on Theban soil? Never. Your guilt for your father's death forbids it. Thank you. Do either of my two sons know about this? They both know it, and they know what it means. They know it, the swine. And they would rather keep power in their own hands than bring their father home. That's a dreadful thing to say. But I'm afraid it's true. Then it's my hope that no god will step in to put out the fire between them or prevent this fratricidal battle. Let me be their judge in the bloody business they're preparing now, and I will sentence them both. The one in power to lose it forever, the other never to return from exile. Neither one of them raised a finger when I was banished and thrown out from the city. Did they even care when the anathema was pronounced and the gate shut behind me? They said nothing, did nothing. Let them all come, all the great ones of Thebes. If you good people and the powerful presences in this place combine to protect me, this land of Athens will win a great champion to its side. And those who persecute me will be punished for it. We have great sympathy, Oedipus, for you and for your daughter. And your assertion that you will bring mysterious good fortune persuades me to offer you some positive advice. Please tell me, I'll do what you say. Make expiation at once to the goddesses whose holy sanctuary you violate. If you will instruct me, uh, teach me the ritual. Cleanse your hands, then fill the cup you will find there with water from the pure spring that never runs dry. I understand, and when I have this water... Spread sprays of olive branches and pray. In what prayers? That's the most important thing. That these goddesses, the Furies, whom we know to be kindly spirits, will be merciful towards you, a beggar. Pray quietly and reverently. You or someone else standing in for you. Then come away and don't turn back. If you do this, we will gladly stand by you. If you don't, there's nothing we can do. Do you hear these old men's advice? We were listening. What do you want us to do? I can't do it. I'm too weak. And my blindness makes it impossible. I can perform the ritual and the prayers. But where is this place? Can somebody show me? Go into the grove. Beyond the trees, you'll find the acolyte who guards the spring. He'll tell you everything. Antigone, look after our father while I undertake the sacrifice. Nothing is too much trouble. 
when a parent's well-being is at stake. And suffer. But, but everyone knows it. So, so much, much better to hear the authentic version instead of the rumor. I can't. But we're begging you to tell us. Too much to bear. Granted as a favor to us. Or giving you sanctuary. Here. What can I say? My agonies are unique. My punishments unparalleled. The gods well know I suffer for my ignorance. But, but what caused this? Bad luck? My infamous marriage, I never knew the truth. Thebes enmeshed me in that horror. And are those lurid rumors true? That you shared your mother's bed as a lover? It's like death to hear it. But there's more to tell. These girls, they're mine, my blood. But closer to you, me. These daughters, these curses. Darkness of hell. Were nursed by a woman me and gave birth to us all. Then these daughters must have another name. Sisters. Sisters to their own father. Unbelievable. This never-ending horror. Such suffering. It is unendurable shame. The crime! What crime? You committed! Never! I took my reward for saving the city. The queen came as my greatest prize. And my greatest misery forever. That was not all. The blood you shed. Must you have all the details? Every drop that was spilled? Your father. New wounds before the old have healed. You killed him! I killed him! But there's more to be said. What? Justice of a kind. What justice? I killed in ignorance a man who would have killed me. That blood, I admit. But by the laws of gods and men, my innocence is revealed. Here is our king, the son of Aegean, Theseus. You asked for him, and he came. alone would identify you as the son of Laius. All the details they told me while I was coming here simply confirmed the fact. But these scars on your face, the heavenly clothes make your identity quite certain. Let me call you long-suffering Oedipus and ask you what favor you would beg of Athens or of me, you and your companion who endures what you endure. I come to offer you a precious gift. My scarred, battered, and exhausted body. Not much to look at, but worth much more. What is it worth? Why is it precious? Time will teach you its value. Not now, but later. Later? How much later? When will we know? 
when I am dead and you have buried me. Is that all you ask of me, a decent burial? Does the rest of your life not matter at all? If I am buried as I wish to be buried, no. It's a small favor you ask of me. It isn't. It's crucial and hard to perform. I can guess the difficulties between your son and me. They will want to take me back to Thebes. If they want you back, why not go with them? There's no honor in exile for a man like you. When I wanted to go, they would not have me. That seems childish to feel resentful in your situation. Listen to me before you criticize. Certainly. I should make no judgments before I know the facts. My own sons had me thrown out from my native city, and I'm a parasite. My return there is forbidden. But then why bring you back if you can't live there? An oracle has spoken and force them to act. What forces them? Some threat of punishment? Yes, punishment here in this country. Well, you mean in battle, but there's no quarrel between us. Dear son of Aegeus, only the gods escape the penalties of age and death. Time undermines everything. Nothing can stop the inevitable process of decay. The earth itself is eroded. The bodies of men wither, shrink, and die. Good faith dies, too, and lies bear fruit and flourish. Between friend and friend, feelings slowly change, and between cities, too. Distrust grows, love turns to hate, hate to love, and all joy the passing of time becomes sorrow. It's fair weather now between you and Thebes, not a cloud in sight, but time has an infinity of days and nights to live through yet, and the slightest pretext one day will be more than enough to cut down friendship with whole regiments of swords. I shall be long in my grave sleeping a forgotten corpse, but it is then that my cold body will drink their hot blood. If Zeus still rules, and Apollo his son keeps his word. Before you arrive, my lord, this man swore he had this power to bless our land. He offers us friendship. Who in his right mind would reject that? In addition, as a friend and citizen of a city allied to us, he has a right to our hospitality. And in coming to ask favor of our goddesses, he honors the city and me and speaks of blessings in return. I respect all these things and think highly of him. Our city's protection is his for the asking. Now, you will be responsible for his well-being unless he would rather return to Athens with me. Choosing to pursue which of these two courses you prefer, we will be guided by your wishes. Gods, these men are worth the See, what is your decision? Will you come with me? I would, but this is the place. I must stay. Why here particularly? Speak freely, I won't stop you. The people who banished me must be defeated. And your being here, that will bring us the blessing. You will see the proof if you stand by your promise. My word can be relied on as much as any oath. But if you leave me... What are you afraid of? My enemies are coming. Well, these fellows will protect you. But if you go... I understand the situation. I'm sorry. I'm frightened. But I am not. But you don't know the threats. I know one thing for certain, that no one will take you from here or anywhere against my will. I've heard threats before. Noisemakers and bullies are always very free with them. Very rarely do they come to anything when people calm down and assess the situation rationally. These people may have spoken very grandly of taking you away. Any voyage of that kind will be across very stormy seas. I can promise you that. Don't be afraid. Apollo is your protector as much as I am. Besides, you will find my name is enough, even when I am not here to keep you safe. Endlessly 
and a leaf shrouded glade, and in wine dark ivy, where the luscious vine dangles its bad bunches. And untrodden within, hidden from the sun, where no breezes breathe or winds tear, the shrine of the nymphs who nurse and caress the drunken god of wine. Fair like star clusters, the narcissus shines, watered each dawn by the Close by, the crocus golden eye glitters like an ancient garland that twines flowers for jewels in the goddess's hair. There, the pure and gushing spring flows ever unsleeping to the river Kephisus, and its fertile valley floor is always watered and always green, and the dark soil swells and brings to birth all the fruits of the earth. The song of the muses can be heard in these trees, and the queen of love Riding in a dove-drawn chariot with the golden rain. There the grey-leaved olive grows, self-sufficient, self-engendered, superior to anything that Asia knows or the Dorian farmer ever tended. A terror to all our foes. For its rich oil breeds up our sturdy youth, so that no brash young general or experienced commander can ever uproot, pillage, or plunder our silver-grey grows. For Zeus, the unsleeping, guards this precious earth with his vigilant thunder. And grey-eyed Athene herself protects the land that she loves. But the greatest gift of all these, and the people of Athens' greatest boast, is her skill at horsemanship and mastery of the seas. O oh, mighty Poseidon, son of Cronos, you first fathered our glories in these quiet meadows, when you taught us to tame wild horses and bring them under the bit, and how to carve the slender oars to fit the oarsman's strength that drives the sweeping blade, and how to row like a team till the galley skims light as the fifty myriads who guide her across the dangerous waves. Yes, everybody in the world praises Athens. And now you must live up to that reputation. What's happening? Antigone. Crayon is coming with a squad of soldiers. He's heading this way. Good counselors, you have been generous to me. Help me to finish my journey in peace. Don't be afraid. We may be old, but our country is young and full of energy! Gentlemen, good people of Colonus, I can tell from the look of panic in your eyes that you're afraid of me. You need not be, nor need you shout at me or be abusive. I haven't come to make trouble. I, I'm too old for that. And this is Athens, a city without equal for power and reputation in Greece, as I know very well. In fact, it was probably because of my age that I was chosen to talk to your guest, to persuade him back to Thebes. I am here representing the whole city, you understand, not just one man. And as his brother-in-law, too, I was the natural choice, sharing with him the dreadful anguish of our unlucky family. Oedipus, you've suffered enough. Listen to me. Come home. Now. We want you back. The whole city's asking for you, and it's right they should. And I, personally, even more than all the rest. Indeed, I'd be an utter blackguard if I weren't. I'm heartbroken to see you in this condition, on the road, like a tramp. With this one girl as your companion and helper. And who would believe that she could ever descend into poverty as appalling as this? She's very young to be compelled to, to nurse you, nurse your miseries. She should be married. Has no chance while she's on the road and penniless. More likely she'd be easy meat for rape, unprotected on the public highway. I... We're all at fault. I am. You are.
public scandal on our whole family, and it's in the open. It can't be covered up. Oedipus, for the family's sake, listen, and for all the gods our fathers have worshipped, it's time to draw a veil across the whole shameful subject. Remove it from the public eye. Come home with me to your father's house in your own city. Thank these Athenians, they've been kind. But Thebes bred you, and you belong with her. <laughs> you brazen hypocrite. Every decent motive, every kindly gesture you manipulate to serve your own advantage. Do you expect the rabbit to be caught twice in the same snare for a double dose of misery? Once upon a time, I was so horrified by what I had done that I was desperate for exile. And you said no, refused to allow it. But later on, when time had soothed the pain, and the quietness and comfort of my own home was some solace to me. Then you decided to kick me out, like a dog at the back door, booted into exile. Family feeling, blood relationship, you didn't give a damn for either. And now, once again, you see me kindly treated by all these decent people, welcomed by their city. So naturally, you want to drag me away, and you disguise a hard-headed political tactic with an appearance of generosity and concern. Uh, let me tell you, your friendly offers are not wanted yet. Let me make it clear the real reason why you want me back. Not to set me up in comfort in my old home, but to plant me at your frontier like a border fence to keep the peace for you with Athens. Do you think this kind of talk does me any harm? You suffer for it, I don't. As long as you make as little impression on these people as you do on me, I'm satisfied. You're a fool, and old age hasn't made you any wiser. You bring shame on the whole of your generation. Uh, call off your bully boys. I'll not leave you. This is my last hold. Man, I'm finished with you. Let these men bear witness how you insult your own. But when I do get hold of you, you won't. My friends here will take care of me. I can make you uh, suffer without touching you. What do you mean? Wh what have you done? Ah, uh, you have two daughters. My men have arrested one of them already. Oh, and right. the other I'll take now. No, no! Don't shout before you, you're hurt. You've got my daughter. And I'll take this one too. Good friends, Athenians, don't betray me. The laws of the gods mean nothing to this man. Drive him from your country. Away you go, foreigner. There's no justice in what you've done. Oh, what you're doing now! It's time to move. You get hold of the girl. She won't come. Drag her away by force. Oh, 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 where can I run to? Somebody help me! Stranger, what are you doing? Keep the man if you like. The girl is mine. Athens, do you have leaders? Sir, this is unjust. Furious justice. How can it be? She's Stephen, therefore mine. Athenians, help me. Don't touch her, stranger. Let her go before it comes to a fight. Get back. When she's free. If you touch me, our cities will be at war. I warn you. I tell you that girl must stay where she is. Words mean nothing without power. I order you let her go. And as for you, your two little walking sticks are broken now. Stagger as best you can without them. Since it pleases you to abuse your friends and damn your country, whose representative I am honored to be, although I'm of royal rank, carry on by all means. Enjoy yourself. You'll learn in time that you're your own worst enemy. Your uncontrollable temper and spite towards your friends have caused enough problems for you in the past, and now, once again, you'll live to regret it. No, no brother, brother, stranger! Don't you dare touch me! You don't want to leave here until so you release those girls! I see. Then I shall claim the bigger prize, something worth more than two young women. What are you doing? I'll take the man! Do you dare to say that? I'll dare more than say it! I'll do it! Not if our king can stop you! Are uh, you shameless enough to lay hands on me? Yes. Yes. Be quiet, all of you! I won't be quiet! Terrible goddesses who inhabit this place! Let me say one more thing! One more 
curse in your presence, you swine! Listen! Do you see my eyes? They are dark. They've been dark for years. And now you've taken the one person who replaced them, my daylight from me. May the god of daylight, the sun, reward you and all you love with misery and suffering and an old age like mine. This is PBS, the public broadcasting service. Why do 12 million Americans watch the McNeil Lair News Hour? I like Mr. McNeil and Mr. Lair. I think they're good reporters. They're not just uh, rouge cheeks and toothpaste teeth. They're, uh, they're real reporters. They're interested in what they're talking about, and they, I think they find it very important to bring the news to the American public. I think that the News Hour is unbiased in, in, its, in the way that it approaches people and asks the questions and lets them answer the way that they want to answer without pushing some sort of viewpoint on them. NewsHour asks simple, direct questions to those who have the power to change things. They ask questions of a very searching quality and try to get to the bottom of an issue. Their method of questioning seems to be a search for the truth. It gives you a very good idea of who these people are that are making the news and how they're thinking. Robert McNeil, Jim Lair, the McNeil Lair NewsHour. See the news hour at 7, Monday through Friday. These are the television stations of Oregon Public Broadcasting. Oedipus, the eternal exile, cast out of his parents' house, self-estranged from Corinth and banished from Thebes, has found a home at last in that refuge of the outcast, democratic Athens. The staging is timeless. Theseus, the ideal leader so desperately needed for the Peloponnesian War, would be equally at home in a modern operetta or a presidential race. And Creon, in his Cold War wrangling over the defector Oedipus, is as familiar to us as the latest taker of hostages. As for Oedipus himself, we don't need Sigmund Freud to point out the resemblance. As translator and director Don Taylor puts it, in witnessing his end, we see in metaphorical form the destiny of every one of us. We are all headed for the same defeat and darkness, and like Oedipus, we try to make our passing as memorable and worthwhile as we can. Do you hear all this? They hear me, and they see your brutality. And they know the only strength I have left is the strength to curse. I've had enough of all this, old as I am, and without my soldiers, I'll take you myself. Oh, God, oh, God, save me now. How dare you? You won't get away with it. Ah, yes, I will. Yes, if I to her laws are brought low. Law fights for the weak, or when he fights for justice. Do you hear his raving? It's all noise and no trouble. I can't stow that. Are you no much less? Oh, You'll have to put up with it. Citizens, leaders, get weapons in your hands. Our sovereignty's flouted. Lord of Rose, don't let them go. making my sacrifice at the altar of Poseidon, the most powerful local god, when this noise interrupted me and brought me here faster than I intended. Tell me what's happening. My good friend, never was man's voice more welcome. This man has attacked me. What man do you mean? What has he done? This man, Crayon, is he still here? He's taken from me all I have left. My daughters. He's done what? Every word I've said is true. All right, one of you, as fast as you can, go to the altar. Tell them to cut short the sacrifice. Make their best speed, both horse and foot, to the place where the main road fox, the cavalry at full gallop, the two girls, and their captors must not pass that point. I must wipe the smile off this foreigner's face if he thinks that he can make a fool of me with an arrogant show of force. Get a move on, man. An order is an order. This man can thank his stars that I have learned to control my anger. 
If I were to treat him as he deserves, he'd leave here in a sorry state. However, he shall have law, or as much of it as he acknowledges in his own actions. You, sir, will stay exactly where you are until those two girls are brought back here and stand in front of me. Your behavior is insulting to me, and a disgrace to yourself, your own people, and your country. Justice is the ruling principle of Athens. We live by the rule of law, not force. And you come barging in, ignoring everything we stand for here, for all the world, like a robber baron, plundering everyone and everything at your own whim. Well, perhaps you think there are no men in this city, but only cringing lackeys, and that I myself am nobody to consider. Did you learn this sort of behavior in Thebes? Oh, Theseus, you are wrong. It wasn't because I thought the men of this city lacked guts or good sense that I acted the way I did. <laughs> it's, it's very simple. I didn't think that you would take such a liking to one of my relations as to keep him here against my wishes. I felt absolutely certain that no one would want to protect the despicable criminal who killed his own father and incestuously married his own mother, fathering incestuous children. The hill of Ares and the shrewd counselors who meet there, the symbol of Athens, in a justice and a wisdom, world famous as such, would hardly give political asylum to an old wandering reprobate. I felt sure of that and therefore entitled to arrest him. It was my business, not yours. <laughs> think is more degraded, mine or yours, by this sewer. The, the vile accusations you so much delight in, the incest and the murder and all the rest of it. I didn't intend any of these actions. I endured them. The gods took their pleasure of me. Paying back, I suppose, some old sin of my ancestors. Because you will find nothing in me. No guilt, no sin, however assiduously you look, for which these crimes I unwittingly committed, damning myself and all my family, could be just punishment. You will say anything in front of anybody, even things better left unsaid. You, you shame me in public in front of all these decent people to degrade me in their eyes. And then when Theseus' name is mentioned, you grovel and you sing fulsome praises of Athenian wisdom and Athenian government, not realizing that flattery means nothing to a city like this that knows how to honor the gods and then in the same breath, you try to kidnap me, an old man, in the middle of my prayers, in a sacred place, having already seized and dragged away my daughters. That is an insult to these goddesses, and I call upon them to help and defend me, and the people of this country, who will soon show you that they are men to be reckoned with. Yeah. Yeah. Theseus, this man is innocent. A helpless victim of terrible punishments. We must help. All right. Move off! The man who came to arrest innocent people has been himself arrested. The hunter is caught in his own net. Profits craftily made and without sound backing are the soonest lost. I suppose you had allies. You would hardly have planned such a daring raid yourself. Well, here they can't help you. I shall see to that. We can't allow the state to be threatened by one man's arrogance. Do you understand me? Or are my words as worthless as good sense always is to a man plotting mischief? I have no quarrel with you, not here. When I get back to Thebes, I shall know what to do. Threaten me, by all means. But quick march! Need to stay here. Be confident that I shall bring your daughters back. Nothing but my own death will stop me. The gods give you good luck, Theseus, for your generosity and your kindness. Who would wish to be anywhere but where our enemies turn to fight? And the voice 
clash of bronze is heard in the air. And the clash of shields is the sword's fight. Perhaps their vanguards meet where the Pythia guards Apollo's shrine by the shore. Or where the sacred torchlight brightens the Bay of Eleusis. Divine Demeter, a fertile queen and her dark daughter. Enact their mysterious rites beneficial to men. And the vow of secrecy is sworn like a golden seal on the lips of their acolytes. And there I see Theseus denying these raiders escape from our land and rescuing Oedipus' daughters with his own invincible hand. Or maybe they're clattering chariot wheels or they're straining horses' speed and stamina. A spark of past snowy ridges and fells and reach the uttermost western pasture. But they'll get no further. You see in the war god's bloody face as his terrible chariot thunders nearer. Awesome, that sight! And features no less as his brilliant squadrons pass. The harness glitters on easy rain. Each horseman sweeps by in a gleam of brass to prove himself best of Theseus' men. Athena's praises they sing. And, and the, the mysterious, mysterious birth of Poseidon, bursting like a living earthquake from his mother, the earth. Is it now the fighting, or will they soon fight? Something tells me that before tonight, we'll come face to face with these girls who've endured such suffering at their own family's hands. Youth will bring all the anguish we endure to a mysterious conclusion. And victory and peace out of all this destruction. Oh, to be free as a bird in flight. To look down, down like a god on this struggle. From like the clouds where to lift your height. President of the Immortals, all-seeing Zeus, grant this much to us, that our local militia should distinguish themselves in this battle, in ambush or cavalry charge. And may subtle Athene, Zeus, grey-eyed daughter, Apollo the hunter, and his dear slave sister Artemis, combine their powers to bring peace with the guarantee of the gods to the land and people of Colonus. You have traveled far, but my instincts didn't betray me. And now my eyes confirm it. Your daughters are coming, escorted by soldiers. Where are they? Is it true? Father, dear father, if only some god could give you eyes again to see this great man who has rescued us. My girls, are you really here? Here. Yeah. Oh, both of us oh, here. Oh, my two precious girls. Even daughters are precious. Oh, my life depends on you. One sadness supports another. <laughs> I could die now without complaining. No bitterness with you two here. Stay close on each side. Embrace me as I embrace you. This is rest. After all my many years wanderings, this is peace. <laughs> Tell me, what happened? Oh. Keep it brief and to the point. The simplest words are the most suitable for young women. Oh. <laughs> this man saved us. Let him tell the story. Is that brief and womanly enough? <laughs> oh, oh, my good friend. Bear with us in all our tears and laughter, this, this long drawn out reunion. I, I thought I'd lost them forever. I understand very well that you are the man I must thank. I made a promise to you, old friend, and I've kept it to the letter. They're back, alive, and none the worse for their abduction. As for the skirmish, well, why waste words on that? Your daughters will tell you, when they will boast for me far more effectively than I can. <laughs> there is one thing, though, I'd like to ask. A small detail, probably not important, which came to my notice on the way back here. I value your opinion. I, know I never think it wise to ignore odd or inexplicable occurrences. Tell me about it, son of Aegeus. We know nothing of the matter here. A man, so they tell me, claiming to be a relative of yours, but not from Thebes, was found seeking sanctuary at Poseidon's altar, where I was praying myself before I was called here. Where does he come from? What favor does he ask? Only one thing they've told me. He asks, apparently, to speak with you. A brief word, nothing more. About what? Sanctuary is a serious business. Simply to speak with you, they say, then go back the same way he came unharmed. But... Who would go to such lengths to speak to me? Well, some relative of yours who comes from Argos or thereabouts and needs a favor. Not 
not another word, my friend. What's the matter? Don't ask me. Don't ask you what? Tell me. Argos gave the game away. I know who it is. What has he done to provoke such antipathy? He is my son. But I hate him more than any other man. But the man is praying. There are questions of religious custom involved. I think you must hear him. Father, listen. I know that I am young to give you advice. But let the king have his way and satisfy his conscience by giving the gods their due. For our sakes, too, as his sisters, let our brother come. There's no need to be afraid of him. What can he say that can injure you or weaken your resolve? There can be no harm in hearing him, surely. In fact, questionable motives, if he has any, will be quite obvious in what he says. He is your son, and whatever wrongs he has done you, however unfilial he may have been, it can hardly be right for you, as his father, to pay him back by treating him equally badly. Or let him speak to you, at least. <laughs> Other fathers have ungrateful sons and uncontrollable tempers, but most men accept the good advice of friends and family. Forget today, remember the past. Your own undeserved punishment and the resentment you felt towards your parents. Anger uncontrolled is evil in itself and leads to terrible consequences. How can you forget that? Every day your blinded eyes remind you. Oh, say yes, Father, to please us. We shouldn't have to beg for him when what we ask and what he asks is just. You've been well treated here. Treat him with similar consideration, at least. Yes. Yes. You must have your way. However painful the consequence is for me, I can refuse you nothing. But if he must come, Theseus, my friend, be sure I'm well guarded. Don't leave me in his power. One word is enough, sir. I need not boast about it, but you need have no fear. When I'm safe in the gods' hands, you're safe in mine. span of years is a fool to his last breath for well, what does old age bring but biting pains and bitter tears and pleasures few and decreasing later or sooner the same death not with marriage songs but funeral weeping delivers us all to the earth not to be born is best or being born to waste no time in lingering, but return to the dark, our beginning and end. Youth soon passes, like a carnival of frivolity. Horror and pain follow behind. Reality's bleak and inescapable. Greed, envy, rapine, civil war and carnage. Old age only increases the torment. Shorter friends and breath. You struggle on towards the last crisis. And I know I am not unique. Everyone in the end must learn to suffer for them. As Oedipus does. A long persecuted girl, like an exposed rock in a savage waste of northern seas, pounded by waves, sucked and torn by remorseless tides, he endures elemental forces of destruction, lasting him like the four winds from the blood red west and the silver dawn. 
where the sun rides like a burning ship in mid-heaven. And the frozen midnight's ocean. coming quite alone, and his eyes seem to be full of tears. Who is he? We made a good guess. It is Polynices. Sisters, my dear sisters, I don't know where to begin. Who to pity more, myself or my father? An old man alone in a foreign country with only you two to look after him. Filthy old clothes, all worn out and squalid, making him look worse even than a beggar down and out. with the wind and stone blind that dirty little bag I suppose carries what scraps he gets to eat and it's my fault I see it now late in the day admittedly and it's unforgivable of me of course I don't need anyone else to tell me that I have treated you abominably I know I have I accuse myself there's no need to call witnesses I'm guilty the verdicts given the sentence passed Why won't you speak to me? Say something, Father. Don't turn me away without a word. Will you send me back the way I came, with nothing but contempt and silence, without even telling me why you're angry? Antigone, his name, you're his daughters, my sisters. Persuade him to say something, at least. Not just this surly affectation of dumbness. I have prayed at the God's altar with all due reverence and ceremony. To ignore my prayer is an insult. He can't send me away without even speaking. My poor brother. Tell him yourself what you've come for. Keep talking. Something you say might please him or provoke anger or pity. Anything but this silence. Take that point and I'll tell him everything. But first, I appeal to the god Poseidon, at whose altar I was praying. The king of this country found me there and brought me here to speak with you. And promised me safe conduct for my departure. A promise which I hope you gentlemen and my sisters and my father will see fully honored. Well, father, let me tell you why I have come here. I have been banished, driven out from the city of my birth, because I asserted my undoubted right as your eldest son to your sovereignty and throne. My younger brother, Etiocles, was behind my banishment. There was no debate, not even any fighting. He seized power somehow by persuading the people to support him. He made good propaganda with the curse on your name infecting me with the same disease. I've spoken to soothsayers, and they all say the same. So, I went down into Dorian territory, to the city of Argos. There, I married the daughter of Adrastus, and made good friends with some of the best-known military men in the Peloponnese. I planned an alliance with them. A treaty of seven signatories for a seven-pronged attack on Thebes. Euclides had taken what was mine by right, and I promised myself to take it back or die honorably in the attempt. So why am I here? I'll tell you. I've come to ask a favor for myself and on behalf of my allies. 
seven generals with seven private armies who now, at this moment, are making dispositions with their troops across the whole plain of Thebes. And I speak for them all in asking you for the sake of your daughters, for your own sake, to put an end to your anger against me and support us as we take the field to punish my brother who has seized the power and position that are mine by right. The oracles, if they can be trusted, all say the same thing. The ones that have you on their side will win this battle. we were brought up with. Father, listen. We're both in the same boat. Both outcasts and exiles. Both begging when it comes to the point, forced to crawl merely for the bread to live on while he, my brother, with no right to the throne, lives like an emperor and laughs at us. I can't bear to think of it. I'll stop him with your help. I'll whip him out like a stinking dog. Reinstate you in the comfort you deserve. And finally, when I finished him off, Establish myself in the place that belongs to me. Your support will make my victory inevitable. Without it, I don't know how I can survive. Oedipus, you must answer him for the king's sake. He can't be dismissed without some reasonable reply. matters to me. If he hadn't sent him and asked me to speak to him, he would never have heard one word from my lips. I will grant his request by giving him the sort of answer he deserves in words he will never forget. Remember with any pleasure. You, you're contemptible. When you were in power, with that same sovereignty that your brother has seized firmly in your hands, you kicked me out. Me, your own father. You exiled me, made me a stateless refugee, forced me to wear these worn-out rags, this very same filthy coat you weep such crocodile tears over now, being yourself in a predicament not unlike mine. Tears, nothing. What are tears that a sentimental indulgence? This must be borne, and will be borne by me until my death. You, as far as I'm concerned, are nothing more than my murderer. You threw me out, opened up whole new worlds of pain for me, turned me into a beggar dependent on other men's charity merely to stay alive. And I would have died too if I hadn't had daughters as well as sons. My sons cared nothing for me. These girls kept me alive. They looked after me. They are my sons, doing everything and more than men could do. And you too, you and your brother, you two are bastards, if ever men were. No sons of mine. If there is any justice, any moral law instituted by Zeus, and like him eternal, then you're damned for sure. You and all your projects. And now, God, get out. Get right away from here. I disown you. Scum! No father for you here or anywhere. Only this curse. My malediction echoing forever in your ears. You will never defeat your own people. You will die. Your brother will kill you and you will kill him. The one who banished you as you banished me. 
in one moment of fraternal slaughter. My curse is on you! And I call on all the gods of the dead to take you both to your true home in the most unrelieved darkness of the bottomless pit of hell. And there is the god of blood who provoked this hatred between brothers and the ferocious goddesses on whose sacred ground we stand. Get out! And shout it aloud on every street corner in Thebes. And tell your famous friend, Oedipus Testament, the inheritance he has divided between his loving sons. I was suspicious of you, Polynices, and your motives from the moment you got here. Now, make yourself scarce. And is that all? After such a long journey, so many high hopes and friends who trust me. Nothing. Less than nothing. We marched from Argos, full of optimism. You reward us with curses. But I can't tell them that, can I, or turn back now? I must advance towards whatever the outcome is and keep my mouth shut. Well, sisters, you heard his curses come true, and if you manage to get back to Thebes, for God's sake, remember, I'm your brother. See that I'm properly buried, decently, with the proper ceremonies. Everyone will praise you for looking after him in exile. But how much more famous you'll be for caring for me, too, when I'm helpless, after I'm dead. Father, oh, listen. You must do one thing for me. My sweet little Antigone, what one thing is that? Turn back your army, back to Argos now. Stop the war. Don't destroy yourself and Thebes. Not possible. How could I ever lead an army again if they see me flinch now? But baby brother, why should you ever want to lead it? What's the point in destroying your own city? The alternative is permanent exile, acquiescence in dishonor, and a younger brother's contempt. But it forecasts death for both of you. You're doing your best to make those prophecies come true. Well. That will please him. Oh. I can't turn back now. Dear heavens, but your men will never follow. Not when they hear the prophecy. But they won't hear it. I won't tell them. A good general is always optimistic. He keeps bad news to himself. My love, will you go on as if nothing had happened? Yes, I'll go on. Don't try to stop me. The way ahead is reasonably clear. It's dark, and there are terrifying prospects and ghastly images lurking in the shadows. But I have no choice. Your road, sisters, will be better lit. The gods, I hope, will be kinder to you, particularly if you carry out my last request after I am dead. A decent burial. For the present, there is nothing you can do. So let me go and say goodbye forever. Look in my eyes. You're seeing them for the last time alive. God, brother, my brother! Don't cry. How could you tell me not to cry? You're going to your death. It's certain, and you know it! If it's certain, I must endure it. Oh, for it. God's sake, listen! I can't listen! I so can't. be quiet. I can't bear it. How can I, knowing you won't come back? Knowing is the prerogative of gods, not men. Who knows anything? Good luck to you both. Oh. May those who control our destinies give you some chance in life. You're innocent much as the least you deserve. No. No. Is 
Ismene, send a messenger for Theseus, my friend. I need him now. Why do you need him? What's happening, father? The thunder is the voice of Zeus speaking in the hour of my death. There isn't much time. <laughs> as the oracles promised. No avoiding it now. How can you tell? Is the thunder a sign? I know, and it is. Get the king, quickly, fetch him here. There isn't a moment to lose. <laughs> The prince, is he coming yet? He must get here while, I, while I'm still conscious. This is something important. You have to tell him. I made him a promise to him and his country in return for kindness. I must make it good. <laughs> shouting hope for my own people and our foreign guest calling me back. Is it this terrible storm, the sky on fire with lightning, all the weaponry of the heavens in action? All men are nervous to see the gods' power so nakedly demonstrated. I needed you, Prince, and now you are here to take the good luck the gods have given you. What's happening, son of Lyre? Something new and strange? My time has come. I made a promise to you and your city. Now I must fulfill it. No man can foretell his death. How do you know? The gods themselves forewarned me by signs and omens they taught me to recognize. What signs? Do you recognize them now? These repeated thunderclaps and flashes of lightning. The whole artillery of the immortals exploding over my head. I have good reason to believe you. You make prophecies and the events follow. What must I do? What? about to reveal to you, son of Aegeus, is treasure beyond price, knowledge. Your city must keep secret and living till the end of time. In a moment, I shall lead you myself without anyone to guide me to the place where my life will come to an end. That place must remain your secret. Nobody else must ever know of it, not even what neighborhood. And that secret will give your city strength greater than regiments of Athenian infantry or powerful allies. This secret power will give you an advantage over the people of Thebes, that nation sprung from the harvest of the dragon's teeth for all time. Discords arise between neighboring states, however justly they are ruled, and men go to war for the sake of insult or interest, and even for the most frivolous of motives. The gods are always watching. They see wickedness and injustice when it occurs, when rational men become lunatics and mankind suffers for it. The gods always repays such tyrannies in their own good time. Never, Theseus, give them cause to repay you in that manner. I know I need not tell you. You understand these things as well as I do and could teach me. Now, I think it's 
is time for me to go. Some instinct tells me the way as though a god's hand were in mine and leading me. My two girls follow, follow me. You have guided my footsteps for so long, and now it is my turn. No, don't touch me. I can find my own way, quite unaided, to my mysterious grave. The earth of Athens that will hide my bones like a shroud forever. This way. Death is here. Hermes himself. I feel his chilly finger. And I can see Persephone in a black veil beckoning me into her silent kingdom. Sun! Daylight! Which has been no light to me for years. I saw you once. I remember how good you were. And now, I can still feel you. Your life-giving warmth here on my face for the last time. Now I go down with faltering steps to the last darkness, the blindness of eternity. Theseus, you have been my best friend. My blessing on you, your land, and your people. Be famous and prosper. And in your prosperity, remember me among the dead. Can you hear our prayers in your dark country, queen invisible to human eyes? And Hades, master of the dead, let there be no pain as the old man dies, nor any tears as he goes to his bed in the earth and enters eternity. Let him take his place on the dark plain walking the endless fields of night. Unjust persecution, pain and suffering were his destiny. Justice at the end is his right. Take pity on him, powers of darkness. And you, many-headed dog of hell, slobbering in your chains at the gate that's always open, snarling at all who pass to their last everlasting state. Let him pass in peace and quietness into the grey fields of silence. Born of earth and horror, master of the deep, lead him down in reverence. Muzzle the beast. And bless his passing with eternal sleep.
last words. Oedipus is dead. But it isn't possible to do any justice to what happened in there, as briefly as that. I must tell the whole story. He's dead at last, then, that long-suffering man. Be quite sure about that. He's crossed over into death. Did he suffer much, or did a god come for him? It was strange and marvelous. You all saw how he left us, moving with difficulty in his age, but leading the way himself instead of being guided by one of his friends. He walked as far as that great crack in the earth, the bottomless cave, where the rocks seemed like a stairway of bronze leading down into the dark. Nearby, there's a natural basin of rock, a place where many paths meet, where the celebrated pact between Theseus and Perithous to raid the underworld and kidnap Persephone is commemorated. Everything there is sacred. The great chasm itself, the basin, the rock of Thoricus, the hollow pear tree, and the ancient stone tomb. Surrounded by these mysteries, he sat down and quietly removed all his filthy and worn out clothes. And then he spoke to his daughters. He asked them to fetch some pure running water from a stream somewhere so that he could wash himself and pour an offering to the spirits of the dead. Just nearby, there's a small hill sacred to Demeter, goddess of growing things, which is always fresh and well watered. So they did as he asked, and soon brought the water and washed him with it and dressed him reverently and with all the ritual customary when a man is dying. And when he was satisfied that everything was done as it should be, he had his way in everything. They attended to his slightest whim. There was a low rumbling, like thunder, from the bowels of the earth. The girls were frightened, and they cried, and fell on their knees, trembling, with their arms clasped round his knees. And they went on like that for some time, crying out loud, and hugging themselves, and swaying from side to side as if they were heartbroken. And when he heard them, saw how upset they were. He lifted them up, and put his arms round them and soothed them and said, my dear daughters, today I must leave you, as all fathers must leave their children. Today is the end of me. My life is over, and your long penance is over too, the never-ending task of looking after me, which you performed without a complaint although I know how irksome and tiring it was. One word, though, makes every burden lighter to bear, and that word is love. They all cried, and they all embraced each other, clinging so hard it seemed they could never be parted. But eventually they were. The crying stopped, and there was silence, and suddenly, there was an unearthly voice. A stomach-turning sound! So that you could see everyone trembling. Everyone's hair was standing on end. This voice, which was low and deep and must have been the voice of a god, kept on repeating like a terrifying whisper. Oedipus, Oedipus, your life is over to the very hour. And now you linger too long, too long. And when Oedipus heard this unearthly summons, he asked for Theseus to come close to him. And when Theseus was by his side, he said, my good friend, listen, I want you to promise and give your right hand on it. And my two daughters, you give him yours, that you'll never leave them to their own devices and the world's mercy. But do whatever seems best for them in the uncertain circumstances of the future. And when this promise was given, Oedipus, groped for his girls with his blind hands, and when he'd got them, he held them tight and said, Now, my girls, 
You must be brave as you were born to be. You must go away now and make no attempt to see things which are mysteries and are forbidden to you. Go quickly now. Theseus alone must stay to see what happens. We all heard that. And we were all in tears at his words. But then his daughters turned from him. And we turned with them and followed them away, leaving him there. But after a few moments, while we were walking, we looked round. And I can hardly believe it. The man was gone. He disappeared from the face of the earth. The king was there, standing on his own, holding his hand in front of his eyes as though he'd seen something appalling which no living man could bear to see. And then formally, he made short prayers to earth and to heaven, stooping and raising his hand. And that was the end of it. How Oedipus died and by what strange rites of passage he passed from this world into the dark, no man living can say except Theseus. There was no lightning from heaven struck him, and no tidal wave swept him out to sea, but he was taken for sure. Perhaps some kindly ghost from the dark regions came to show him the way. Or the earth silently opened and silently took him with love, like a child. One thing is certain. There were no tears, no cries of pain, or sound of suffering of any kind. A stranger, more wonderful death than anyone has experienced before. Oh, some of you won't believe me, I know. You'll say this is fantasy or a bad dream in broad daylight, straining all credibility. That's what you think. That's your privilege. I saw what I saw. And there's nothing more I can say. But where are the girls and the others who were with him? They were following me, not far behind. Yes. I can hear them crying. They're here. with him so many years on his journey. Oh, this unforgettable ending. Mysterious beyond all human understanding. Tell us what happened. We can only guess. He's dead. As most men would wish to die not cut down in the pain and stress of battle or drowned at sea, but lifted by invisible hands to the sightless fields of eternity. And the night sufficiently death-like descends on our eyes too, forced to beg our bread from strangers, without friends in alien lands across dangerous seas. What bed or board for us among the outcast and rejected? None that I can see. Let the God of the dead lead us down with our long-suffering father to rest. Why live for a life of pain among the persecuted? 
but the God's decree must be endured by the best of daughters. When grief blazes up like a firebrand, it leaves with only ashes. Your sufferings are not the worst. All the pain I endured. How strange to discover that I long for those days of agony to return. Any anguish was bearable while I held my father in my arms. I would welcome such agony again. But now, the dark cloak of death forever enfolds him with its mantle of earth. My love survives. Even there, in that darkness, among the dead, it lives. So now, it is ended. And his hopes are fulfilled. Fulfilled? How can that be? He wanted to die in a foreign land, among strangers. He is satisfied now. In that shaded earth, let him lie at peace. He has left grief behind with us, who mourn his tragic destiny, my dear dead father. My eyes are blind with tears. My voice choked with singing your bitter threnody, and that song will never end. You died as you wished to die, among strangers, leaving me alone to mourn your mysterious passing. A bleak future for us. Never-ending misery. He had daughters to ease his pain. Fatherless! Unprotected! Who will care for our suffering? The gods bless his dying. Now he is gone. And you must make an end of weeping. Pain is the inheritance of every man. We must go back. Go back? Why? I have to. I must. Why must you tell me? To see that yard of earth, his sanctuary. His grave! My father's grave. The one chokes me! But you can't! It's forbidden for anyone to go to that holy place. Don't be angry with me. But you must understand! Why must I? What now? There is no grave. And he sleeps the sounder. Take me to the place, and I will die there too. Oh, God help me then. Bereaved twice over. Homeless and unloved. What will I do? Condemned to the misery of solitude forever. You need not be frightened. We are exiles, outcast. You came to no harm today. That's true. And you're quite safe here. For a time, at least. I know that. Then tell us what is troubling you. That this exile may be permanent, that I shall never go home to Thebes. Don't try to go. From one sorrow to the next. No one's sufferings have been greater. And is this the worst? No, the worst is to come. <laughs> On your sea of troubles. The storm blows fiercer. We were born to this. Born to suffer. Which way, Zeus, shall we go now? Are you dumb to our pleading? No ray of hope for us. No word ever. Is there any road that leads to home? This may may dry your tears. Death came gently. And we who are alive share the blessing which the dark lords of the underworld granted to him. Overindulgence in grief when miraculous favors have been granted will make them angry. Oh, 
We must ask a favor. Ask it then. You are my children now. With our own eyes, we must see the place where our father lies. No, that is forbidden. But why? You're the king. Your word is law. His last request, dear daughter, was that no mortal should ever approach the place. Nor any hymns, nor sacred ceremonies be sung there above the hidden patch of earth which covers him and ensures his rest. He laid that responsibility upon me, promising good fortune to this city if I carried it out in spirit and to the letter. I swore I would do it. And there were gods listening who take note of men's promises. Then I won't ask again. It is enough if he wished it so. But may I ask for you to conduct us back in safety to our ancient city of Thebes? A war is brewing between our brothers, which I must prevent if I can, before a river of blood flows and drowns both of them together. Of course I will. I will do anything I can to help you for your sake and for my new and newly lost friend to please him in his secret grave. Here and there in Oedipus at Colonus, we catch brief glimpses of the playwright himself, as the chorus describes the hazards of living so long, or when Oedipus quarrels so bitterly with his son. But how could Sophocles have guessed that before his play could be staged, he would himself be dead and Athens defeated? He was making a different connection, 
For when Polynices tells his sister that whatever happens next, he wants a proper burial, Sophocles was surely looking back to an earlier work and forward to the end of the Theban trilogy. And you, you with your head down, what do you say to this accusation? Hmm? You admit it. You guilty or not? Yes. I'm guilty. I don't pretend otherwise. You soldier, get out. You're free to go back to your unit. Count yourself lucky. Now, tell me a simple yes or no. Did you hear of my order forbidding the burial? Of course I heard it. How could I not? Yet you dared to disobey the law. Yes, I did. Because it's your law, not the law of God. Natural justice. Which is of all times and places numinous, not material, a quality of Zeus, not of kings, recognizes no such law. You are merely a man, mortal, like me. And laws that you enact cannot overturn ancient moralities or common human decency. They speak the language of eternity, are not written down and never change. They are for today, yesterday and all time. And how did Sophocles finally die? According to one account, he hyperventilated while reciting from this play, Antigone. Until next time, I'm Michael York.